Okay. Uh, well, hello everyone and welcome back to uh, the last session of the day uh, for our Live Europe online uh, festival. Uh, we are very happy to be uh, organizing this conference session dedicated to music venue professionals to really tackle and cover the important challenges related to our sector and take a future-oriented approach on how we want to better recognize the role of uh, music venues in this time. So a big thank you uh, to our partner for this session, uh, the Showcase Festival Mill, and a big thank you to our moderator and our speakers uh, who will be covering a very important subject in the next hour, which is uh, the role of music venues and cultural centers as cultural mediators. So in the last minutes of the conferences, if uh, you haven't uh, joined us in the previous sessions, um, we'd like to tell you that uh, the floor will be open to you for questions uh, in the last 15 minutes. So if you already have questions, you can put them right in in the Q&A section or uh, raise your hand uh, with the, the option given on, on Zoom. So yes, with no further ado, Luz, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much. Hi everyone, uh, thanks again for the invitation to moderate this uh, conversation. I have with me Melissa, Ella, Baptiste and Craig. Um, four players or four personalities with different backgrounds but with a uh, few things in common about the, 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 their cultural activity and their uh, curational and programming activities and especially in defending causes and ideas. Uh, in the topics that we're going to discuss. So before we go deeper in the conversation, and uh, I think it will be better instead of me presenting uh, the, the, the four persons that are joining us to, uh, this, uh, this afternoon, I will ask you for in one, two minutes, we can start for, with Melissa, for example, to do like a quick round with our four, 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 four speakers about who are they, who they represent, what the ideas behind their projects. So as a quick introduction for, for the four or five um, uh, topics that we would like to discuss in the next hour. So Melissa, maybe we can start with you and then we go Ella, Baptiste and Craig. Uh, so we can have this little bit of background about who you are and what you do. Okay, hello, hi, thanks for the invite. Hello, everyone. Um, I live in Berlin, Germany, um, but I'm from the States. I live here the, uh, 25 years, so most of my cultural work has been in, in Germany. Um, I work, um, I do many different jobs in the music business, um, but probably from, from today, I was here as more of an activist, I would believe, um, from working with a lot of women in music um, projects. I have a new current project called Night School Berlin, which is more with discourse and um, live music and performance together. This was all happening before COVID. We just got kind of off the ground and so now we're reformatting everything. But I work as a, um, as a consultant for musicians on a, like a weekly basis um, at Music School Berlin. Um, this is from funded from the city and from the EU um, to help musicians uh, with their um, questions that they have about professionalization and making mm -hmm. a living as being a musician. Um, and then I also work as a promoter and festival organizer. So I do, you know, I basically all my jobs are related to music and I kind of just move around and I act cross, cross them at many points, um, whether it's communities or um, venues or um, ideas or music genres or something. Okay. So. That's kind of in a nutshell, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good starting Thanks. point. Um, <laughs> Ella from Amsterdam and from Trans Europe uh, Hills. So Ella, please, a uh, quick introduction so we can get to know you better. Yes, hi everyone. So my name is Ella. I'm actually based in Sweden at the moment. Uh, I, moved from, uh, yeah, I moved from Amsterdam uh, to Sweden uh, last year to work for uh, the Trans Europe Hills uh, Network and our office is based in Sweden, that's why. Otherwise, I wouldn't have picked Sweden. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good way of living here. Um, yeah, so at the moment, I am the capacity building manager of uh, Trans Europe House. And Trans Europe House is a, one of the oldest European networks. Uh, we exist almost 40 years. And we are a network of independent um, cultural centers in repurposed buildings. 
and uh, these centers are mostly multidisciplinary and also bottom up bottom up grassroots venues. Um, before that, I uh, started the Nightmare Foundation in Amsterdam. So having a background in organizing festivals, working in clubs, etc., but always had the interest in um, social and cultural developments. That's also my background, social and cultural work. So within the Nightmare uh, organization or with this uh, development that came together and uh, we started uh, an official foundation. And with that, I traveled also the world and um, um, yeah, actually the Nightmare Evan Evangelii or like we, yeah, we brought it uh, everywhere and now we see it all over the world, which is very cool and important. Yeah. yeah. And that's something we're definitely going to approach during our conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, Baptiste from uh, Le Sucre uh, in Lyon and many other projects uh, related to, to Artifati and, and all the, the, the community or the activities you promote. Exactly. Thanks for having me. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, actually my job um, for Artifati, Artifati first is a non-profit organization uh, built 20 years ago. So quite an old one in the um, indie and electronic space in France. And uh, so I'm in charge of the booking and the artistic direction of uh, Le Suc, which is a, a club of uh, approximately 800 people capacity in Lyon. Um, and uh, I'm also booker for Nuit Sonore, uh, the festival in Lyon, we, which was the first project of our organization. And uh, I'm the coordinator of um, Nuit Sonore in Brussels. Uh, for our cooperation uh, based in Lyon. So that's my main job for Artifati. And uh, uh, I also run a label by myself, like it's more a, a more personal project. And uh, I continue to be invested in um, other different uh, fields of the music industry and uh, music field. Okay. Thank you, Baptiste. And, and um, Craig from the UK, from Future Yard. Uh, welcome. Uh, a little bit of your background and a little bit about Future Yard so we can give uh, some context to our audience about what we're going to discuss. You're mute. You're mute, Craig. Sorry. Zoom fail. <laughs> I, did, I did the not mute thing. <laughs> um, six months in, it still gets me. Um, yeah, so thanks very much for the introduction. My name's Craig. I'm from Liverpool in the UK. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, for the last 10 years, I've been running a music magazine um, called Bidolito, which is a monthly free music magazine we've been running yeah, for, for, for 10 years. Um, I've been very involved in the development of music policy um, in Liverpool and in the UK um, within that role. Um, I sit on the Liverpool Music Board, which was set up um, two years ago now to look at um, new policy frameworks to support um, music in the city. Despite the fact that Liverpool is famous um, all over the world for our musical heritage and output, um, up until very recently, there was absolutely no um, policy infrastructure to support music um, in Liverpool, which is crazy, but that is, that is improving and the music board's been an important um, vehicle in, in achieving that. Um, I've run festivals, I've run a festival called Liverpool Psych Fest, Liverpool International Festival of Psychedelia, um, lots of other projects um, and Future Yard has been something we've been working on for the last three years, um, which is a, a new community music venue, a not-for-profit CIC company, which we set up um, and is all based around the brand new music venue in Birkenhead, which is a very, very small town directly on the other side of the river from, from Liverpool, one minute outside Liverpool city centre, but it's a, it's a small kind of provincial town. Um, we run a artist development network out of that building. Um, and we're also just about to start our first um, training program for local young people to come into the venue and learn how to become sound engineers, event producers, and really learn about the whole infrastructure around live music. Um, and yeah, we actually opened our venue on Saturday. So we had our first show on Saturday with 60 people in a room that should take 350 with all of the COVID dramas and uh, um, craziness that comes with that. But yeah, that we opened that. We were on national TV okay. actually in the UK um, okay. around that weekend. So hello. Super. Thanks. 
So uh, thanks again, guys. I think we have a well curated panel, and I'll, I'll I'll try to make this more as a conversation than the Q an internal Q and A. Uh, I don't have specific questions to to each one of you, so uh, feel free to start uh, replying to my questions. If you think you have something to add, please raise your arm if needed. If you don't want to interrupt your colleague, um, and I'll I will I'll try to be quite provocative in my questions, so it's uh, to make you to try to tease you a little bit, and and I'll try to avoid to go through the drama of the COVID-19. Of course, the, at the end we're going to talk about it as an opportunity, maybe uh, more in the policy making. Um, but I will try to to have broader perspectives or or to discuss broader ideas. And I will discuss with something that I think it's is interesting to explore as. As you can see, having consideration your backgrounds and the work that you've been developing um, is maybe for a period of time, the society looked more into the club scene and the music venues uh, or dancing or music and concerts more as pure entertainment uh, to society or to, to, to its people. But, um, the recent story or past story also, and that's 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 why I why I'm teasing you. I've been showing you that the the work that what's been happening in these ecosystems of the music venues, the the clubs, the 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 way you you program it, the audience you 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 bring in, the the stories you tell about it, has been this process of cultural change, uh, uh, or something that like in an economy of scale, so something that starts changing through the programming of a, of a club through the programming of a venue have a, a positive or not, but normally positive consequence on society. I think the Bastiani case in the rave revolution in 2018 is an, a super interesting example that we, we discuss. So having in consideration each one of your projects and each one of your work, how do you see that this work of working in small communities have a direct impact in the in the larger scale of society, or at least in a larger scale in uh, in the cities or in the territory that that you intervene. Maybe I could start with the night mayor, uh, uh, Ella, uh, ex night night mayor, that you might give us an introduction through the perspective of night mayor. But maybe each one of you will add having consideration your context. Um. Well, um, yes, of course, I can give a perspective from, from the Nightmare perspective. We were an organization representing uh, venues, of course, and having an overview on, on trends and developments. But what I, what I see happening, and you, you mentioned also Baziani and, and, and uh, a cultural change happening, but I, I would like to start first that what we see is the dance floor in general is, is getting more political, I would say. So um, um, I think this also has to do with, uh, with the next generation uh, that is more um, socially engaged. And, uh, and I think it's generation Z or in, and, and they are more uh, also demanding and they also are more demanding towards uh, places that they go to uh, organizations, music venues, establishments, um, to um, have a, to have have a voice on a topic or on a, on a, on, a, on a sensitive topic within society, so I think this is a development that you see. And then, of course, the the Baziani example, which was so powerful. Every time I see the the YouTube video with the colorful smoke on the on the main square, it gives me it gives me goosebumps. Um, I do think this is. It's of course in Eastern Europe, and we do we have to deal with the different dynamics within different parts of Europe. It's uh, yeah, it's almost uncom uncomparable. Um, um, and I do think that in places like Basi or like uh, Georgia or Eastern Europe, the impact that can be made can maybe even be even be bigger than the impact being made in in Western Europe, because in Western Europe. Um, Although you could you could uh, not agree because of course we have a lot lot to win still, but it's mostly recognized by uh, policymakers or music or music venues as a part of culture with as a, and as in the Euro uh, Eastern European um, part of Europe, it, it's harder. There's more to fight for. 
Yeah. So also more impact to be made, maybe. But do, do we all think that, uh, and for example, like Le Silk uh, programs and, and, and also Craig programs and, 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 and Melissa, do you all think like the music, the, the dance floor is getting more political? It's, it, do, do you feel that in your programming, in the way you approach things and the way you influence your audience? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's a fact. Those movements, I, you, you talk about Bassiani. I also think about um, the Palestinian underground movements, uh, which was uh, well documented by, uh, by Boiler Room. And um, all those, those movements also, you can, we can talk about what's happened in the South, American, uh, South America before COVID, etc. Uh, we now uh, can constate that the fact there are a lot of political movements in electric music and it's something which was here at the beginning of this culture and for some reason disappeared in the beginning of the 2000s and, um, and yes, definitely we feel that there are these movements. What we gonna, what we try to do is now uh, give a voice in our event to uh, those kind of movement because um, the fact it is still underground, it's of course something important for us, professional, for artists, for yeah the community of worker uh, in this um, in this field of music industry. But uh, I think there are still a lot to do uh, to, to 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 share this message with the the audience, and uh, I also think it's where this is the most important because. We are, well, we are a media. When you run a club, when you are an artist, at some point you are a media. You, you have the opportunity to talk to a massive crowds, actually. And uh, it's also a chance for us uh, that we should use just to, to, to use this power to, to, to spend our message. It's not really a message, actually. I think it's more interrogation. or uh, It's more also yeah, open question. Um, and uh, I think we definitely have to, to be this media now. Uh, when you are a club or a festival, last year we start a new program uh, named Dance to Act, which was definitely focused on yes, the message in music. And uh, and each day we we was talking about we was focusing on the topics. The first was about um, environments uh, and uh, global warming, etc. The second was more about representation, gender representation in the scene. Uh, and the last one was uh, about uh, seen in fight in their country against uh, repressive law or repressive um, religious uh, activities, etc. And that was interesting because that was also a way to have artists playing for sure, but inviting them to talk to the crowd for some, uh, some talk like that, etc. So I think, yes, it's moving. And 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 and, um, and Melissa, uh, like I, I think this open a uh, new topic that is um, uh, you as promoters are not only media like or media like like uh, Baptiste mentioned, but also cultural mediators. So that is also mm -hmm. the role of what what is to be a cultural mediator uh, on on this scenario, especially nowadays with uh, such polarized society that is going into. Um, complete opposites and and being this mediator not only to present the new topics and new people and and the work that you've been developing with the night school in berlin what is to be mm -hmm. this this mediator nowadays well i mean i believe that i mean everything he said is uh, similar to what what we're doing here or what my colleagues are doing in different factions whatever uh format that is if it's a festival or conference or um usually together and just the, the shows, I think we can't really afford not to be um, political right now. Um, everybody that I work with, I mean, I think it's just a part, became a part of our work almost, that we cannot um, sit on the sidelines and just like business as usual and open the doors and um, consume and have people come in and consume something. And I think it's about um, beyond that and about the experience that everybody that comes in as well as the artists, as well as everybody somehow is, is in a way f forced to take a role in what's happening in, in, in these different spaces. And I find that like, for me, it's much more exciting, of course. I mean, I think about all the years that I've been doing that 
And I asked myself also, like, I'm getting a little tired of this one kind of way. It started getting like, okay, is this, which way is this going and flatlined? And I think now we really um, can take the chance to look around and, and really bring things up, bring up these topics, which uh, he mentioned that there's so many, there's like burning fires everywhere around us. And we have to just choose um, one a day and, and uh, be on, out there and talking about it and to do it in the format, which we all know and love, which is, you know, the medium of usually using music. So I think that this is um, a perfect opportunity uh, that we have in the music business to change, to change things um, also for the future and look at how we, we want things to run, uh, not to go back to the same thing. I don't think I'm, I want to go back back to the world that we lived in before. I don't know if it's possible. So I look for new ways um, in, the, in the projects that I do or the new ideas that I have to think about new ways to do that. And, and, and to a lot of collaborations and a lot of leaving out um, this ideas of um, competitions and stuff. I think we really have to work together is what I guess um, my main point is working together to get you know, these things across, even though music has, you know, I mean, nobody has um, said that a song has to be political or a musician has to be political, but I think in a way we're in that stage, we have to, you kind of, it's what's, it's kind of what's vibrating at the, the highest um, place right now. And you, everyone has to kind of find where they're going to fit inside of that, I think. And, and oh yeah, please, I was doing another question, but please. Yeah, I thought so. That's why I wanted to tap in on this question, because actually I wanted to ask uh, like Baptiste and Craig and, and Melissa, are you also a venue owner or are, do you run a venue as well or not? Or just or a concept? Um, I also um, have been um, uh, part of a collective since oh, yeah. um, 20 years. It's a small venue, um, which is still open and operating. It's been um, existing since over 30 years in Berlin, which is a long, wow. long time. Um, so right after the wall, it uh, became, it was established. Mm. And um, yeah, I'm a part of that. And that's where I kind of started doing shows. So kind of, mm. you know, coming back to the roots is also a lot of uh, things in my head these days as well. Yeah. yeah. No, because I, I was wondering, uh, because we see this development, but... I can also imagine that if you are a venue owner or that you, you don't want to be political, you just want to program music and you want, to, you want this to be just entertainment maybe. Huh? And now you see that we, we speak about it as if it's like a, uh, you know, a common thing and, and we see it happening, but I can also imagine that maybe that's not, you, you almost don't have a choice anymore. You, you see what I'm saying? How do you feel about that? That's, yeah. that, that, that's a big difference about uh, what we thought before, that it was just pure entertainment and now it's something else. Yeah, it's a really big question, I think. Can you mind <laughs> just come in, come in on that point, exactly? I mean, I think... Yes, yes, please. Uh, when we, we, let's say we, we, yeah, we opened the venue at the weekend and I think that, I think that the very act of opening a new music venue at this moment in time is a political act. And like, you know, I'm completely comfortable with that. And I think that doing that within a part of the city where, where these things don't happen, there's the part of the city where we've opened, there's no cultural infrastructure. There's, there's very, very little activity. It's very poor. It's one of the poorest wards in the UK. And I think that, you know, by opening a new open not-for-profit community music venue, with great international programming, well, international in time, um, is, is in itself a political act. And I think that uh, I'm comfortable with the fact that I see that as something we've got to do. I mean, we've also committed to key change, you know, um, from the off, which is a UK music industry-wide commitment around gender equality, both within the structure of our organization and within our programming. And, you know, we've made a commitment with our local university venue, and I think, all of those things just come with the territory of being an engaged cultural voice in the world that we find ourselves in now. And I think that if you don't embrace that and make that part of what you are, you'll, you'll fail, you'll be irrelevant. That's my yeah. take. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and that was one of the questions that I, that I also want to make it because uh, you're opening this place, you're opening this place, this new venue, uh, you are 
decentralizing the, 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 the cultural venues or the access to cultural venues. We have here representatives of like major cities, like major European cities. And, and, and I was also trying to ask you uh, as Europeans and as this, um, uh, we see, uh, we always talk about European identity. And I think here it's interesting to talk about it, especially in the topic of policy making and how can we influence that. So how do you also see that the work that you've been developing in your venues, in being political and being up to the topics, how do you see this is also, uh, will also influence uh, uh, the policy making or the, the decision making in terms of new policies for Europe, especially now we've, and now we have to talk about the COVID-19, especially now that there will be some changes that that we cannot uh, uh, um, overlap, we cannot jump from it. There will be some changes. So how the work that you've been developing, do you think it will kind of influence by being uh, provocative or by or putting the topics or putting the, 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 uh, the finger where it hurts in terms of, 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 of topics to be explored? I don't have a direct uh, uh, person to answer. I'm trying to be fair in terms of <laughs> time, but uh, Craig, Melissa, Baptiste, Ella, up to you. You're all mute. There are a lot of different topics. I, I just want to okay. come back to to Ella's um, uh, in, in intervention. It, it's just about one thing. Uh, you, you ask if um, a club have to, to be political. Um, depend. But uh, I have an example. Here in France, some things happen, uh, which is really interesting for me. Concert Venue is able to welcome a crowd for a concert, for a talk for anything if he respects a kind of protocol uh, due to COVID business. So uh, for them, it's possible. Of course, it's uh, less people. People have to be, uh, to, to be sit and uh, have a mask. OK. But for club like Le Sucre, which is another category in, in an administrative way, uh, it just you have to close. There are no way to just have an installation doing exhibition doing a sitting concert for five people, it's just, yeah, you, 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 you stay close. And it's especially because um, there are no differences between what is, uh, I will name it a discotheque, which is a nightclub for entertainment, uh, a beer sealer for me, it's a beer sealer, you know what I mean. It's entertainment and beer, and, and beer business. And what we do, which is actually more close to, to cultural, to, to any cultural institution, concert venue, theater. Why? Because we, we do artistic development. We do uh, local development. We do international booking also. And uh, it's like that every weekend. We, we, we have a political um, engagement. We have things to say about the world, about, uh, about parities, about society in general. And uh, in France, and I know that in other countries, and maybe you will uh, give me more information, it's a big, big problem because uh, we actually have 20 or 30 years uh, delay on the actual culture of young people, and they still don't understand that uh, the nightlife is not just nightlife, it's a, a culture. Yes, it's a culture happening the night, but it's culture. So I don't know if it's really an answer, but yeah. No, it's super interesting. Uh, please, uh, we lost Craig, now he's back. Okay, Ella, sorry. You? I just want to reply real quick because that's yeah. actually, that's exactly that's what's That's the topic, that's the topic. Okay, yeah, it's exactly uh, what's happening is uh, COVID-19 is only amplifying the problem. And the problem is still that clubs, huh, as you, uh, cultural clubs or how you want to call them, are not acknowledged as, as such. They are seen as uh, entertainment discotheques or as a problem, etc. So this only shows that advocacy and um, uh, taking away the ignorance on the decision-making level is there's work to do still. This, that's what this show, what Corona is showing us on this side. Uh, but do, do you do you all see? And back into my question, do you all see that? Like you said, coronavirus was like um, 
made us think about it, like realize about it, this gap between uh, uh, music venues are, as cultural uh, venues or cultural activities. Do you, do you see that there's an opportunity now to, to, to be game changers or to, to present it in a different way and to put it on the level uh, that it could influence policy making uh, and to raise awareness about it? Could I, sorry, I'm, I think I'm back. I'm having a terrible issue with my internet connection. Um, I think that just purely on the level of how music venues are regarded and whether there's any sense of parity between music venues and theatres or galleries or, you know, opera houses, I think strangely, because the UK, because the, the view of music venues in the UK was like so backward, like from a political perspective, like so, 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 so backward. Strangely, I think because of the work that music venues have done collaboratively in the UK during this time through the Music Venues Trust, because we've lobbied as a sector and we've had some brilliant kind of like cooperative working going on, I think we've actually increased the standing of music venues at this time in the eyes of the political establishment. Like, for instance, just on one, one, one example, there's been a VAT cut to 5% for music venues on ticket receipts during COVID. Before that, we were paying 20%. So that's come down to the same level as many European countries, which was never the case before. We were just viewed the same as a pub. Whereas now, the fact that we've been included within the kind of the, the provision for the arts and been regarded that way, I do actually think in a perverse way, you know, not, I mean, the business model is completely shattered and everyone's in a right state financially. But I think just in terms of the perception of the sector from a political level, um, along with all the work that's been done with nightmares in different parts of the country and music boards and, you know, the, the work that's been done over the past few years to the Music Venues Trust, I do think that we're in a slightly better place than maybe we were three, four years ago. I would, I would have to agree also. Um, I think this was happening um, in Berlin already the last year as we have with our establishment also of our uh, music board here. Um, which is uh, six years ago. Um, we also have um, Berlin Music Commission. Uh, we have a club, club commission. We have lots of different um, political structures, which I think we're really um, lucky to have in, a, in the city that we all um, kind of work together on different things. So we see in that sense, the, the, the activities, um, which does come out of the club scenes, and the music venues goes quickly to a level which is very peer to peer. And then from there, they do a lot of the lobbying and um, pushing for us. So we have um, a lot of what's going on has a big say, wh whatever the topic is. And whether it is climate change, whether it is the Black Lives Matter issues, which whatever, whatever it is going on and reflecting inside of the clubs um, is, being pushed to the next level and it is changing I think the way that we're looked at and as well as um, Craig said um, also um, as how value we how valuable we are to culture in general and and in comparison the many years that we had I mean Berlin is um, a very cultural city so we always looked at the difference between us and and the other cultural high arts the um, you know, uh, the opera and, you know, we have two opera houses or three opera houses and it's, you know, crazy where the money is going to. We really had to fight hard for the money we have, but we have a pretty good system now set up and the government, I have to say, um, as well as the local government has, has really put a lot of money in there to help now to figure out actually really what, who needs what and for what reasons as much as possible. And I think this does show that they're listening. It might not be perfect, but it's it's a start, I think, to giving us um, um, something to look forward to afterwards and working together you know, politically. Um, I think we we touch different topics. Um, uh, the the idea is to in two minutes we should open Q and A. So 
to everyone that is at home or at the office watching this uh, conversation. I think it's time to start uh, typing some questions to to our speakers. Um, I will I will try to do another round uh, uh, with you. Uh, it's, it's a more like it's kind of a cliche question, but uh, if if um, if we all think here that like music. Uh, uh, lead to change or the activities that we're doing lead to change so you are all like different but similar backgrounds in terms of uh, ideas but you all fight from for different stuff um and I'll, I'll to maybe to to try to tease our audience to start doing some questions i'll do a final round to understand what do you exactly fight for as as a um, uh, a professional in the music industry uh, what do you fight for on your daily base what are the big ideas behind the work that you develop that will be interesting for here to 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 showcase so uh, we can start with anyone from you it will be like the last minutes before we go to the q a is if we think music needs to change so what do you fight for Yeah, I will start with something that I really trust into. First, what we are doing is to propose to people to to have a good time in their life. Just I remember the first time I saw an artist meeting a crowd, and it's something really, really intense. And uh, it's it's an opportunity to just disconnect to your uh, general life. And it's super simple, but it's super important. Socially, what we are doing even if it's not an intellectual way, is super essential. Uh, and uh, the second point you, you ask, we, we fight for a lot of topics because I think we never leave, I'm young, so, but we never leave a, a period like that. There are a lot of topics at the same time and everybody are lost, to be honest. It's a full-time job now to, to follow the actuality. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we don't have full time for doing that. So uh, I think it's um, our way of fighting now is to follow this actuality and act as a media, as I tell you before, but independent media and also uh, as a media for me, a media should be uh, neutral and it sh should just give the possibility to people to explain themselves and to meet and exactly what we are doing now. And so it's what we are trying to do by giving the, 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 the time to talk to the artists, to giving them a space to express themselves. Because, yeah, in the past, politics was also with artists. And artists' point of view was really more important, I think, in political um, field. And uh, we try to give them, again, uh, a space. Thank you, Baptiste. Hello. <laughs> Oh, was, okay. Um, well, yeah, for me, I think um, cultural spaces and um, music venues are really important for the development of your own identity. So uh, on different levels, uh, on, on the social level, how to connect, how to interact with others, uh, with peers, um, but also to learn more about yourself. Um, how you, what's your view on the world? What are your, what's your perception? What are your perspectives? And so that's kind of a more broader uh, role, but I think that therefore it's very important what we should fight for. Thank you. Craig, we're very polite um, here. I am, we are being very polite, Tom. <laughs> um, a bit of kindness in the world goes a long, goes a long way. Um, I, um, I think I come at what we do with Future Yard from the very, very kind of like, idealistic position but something that i you know firmly believe in i think we all believe in just that simple idea that music can change the world and music can be uh, a way of people finding meaning and a role and themselves and identity and i think that what we want to do with future yard is change one small town first and then if we can learn something about the way that, that, that an organization like ours can be a powerful lever for change then hopefully there's learning that can be done there for similar places all around the world. Thank you, lovely. Melissa, uh, if you want to add something or give yeah, us your I, perspective. I, yeah. 
No, I agree. Um, also, with um, as a for if I look at it from from my position, the jobs that I do and when I have the power to help change or make um, is obviously both the, the venues to fighting for for the spaces, fighting for places that we can keep creating, and the the people that are creators can have that space as well as the people that are partaking in um, as as Baptiste said. Um, this, um, the people that are just enjoying it and, and being a part of it and learning and, and, and connecting to other people. Because I think that's part of something we cannot, we cannot afford to lose right now is connection, which is the, I would say for me, the biggest downfall of the whole Corona is that we lose this uh, person to person connection. Um, although, as I said, I, I believe that we have a chance to use it um, and the right way to create that space afterwards that people can can really connect and, and understand think about why they want to what they're doing in this life and learning new things and meeting new people and you know I'm working with artists every day so I know their struggles so I'm a little bit in there try to be in their shoes and the, of all the people that I'm working with to see like as well as myself as a as a event um, or concert or festival organizer, like where, what do, what do I want to see happen in the next years? What is it going to look like? And how can I be a part of, of making that happen? And that's what's actually just having a lot of discussions with people. And that's what I'm doing all the time is meeting people in the park, you know, uh, talking on like this online. And we're like, just talking about like, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going what is our next ideas? to not feel like we're, we're like powerless, you know? And I think this for me is really important to keep a dialogue open, to open new dialogues to people that are, that are really like, you know, Craig is making this space in a place which has no infrastructure, no structure for something happening, but giving, giving that as a really big gift, I think, to people that are needing of that. And we all, I think, as humans right now are in need of, um, this connection, which we can do through the work, the jobs that we're all doing. Perfect. So we have some questions, so I'm happy. A <laughs> uh, few, few questions have been answered. Uh, as I can see, Baptiste has already answered some, some quicker questions, but I have here more votes on, on one that is from Maria. Uh, and the question is not to anyone in specific. Uh, so what is your biggest hope for change in the period after, after the COVID-19 for the live music sector and for music venues? Hope. Maybe Baptiste, Craig, uh, there are more like um, uh, music venues, uh, promoters or hosts. So maybe yeah. for you two guys first. I mean, I just hope that there is a period post COVID-19 <laughs> at the moment. I'd say that. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I, everything that we've seen um, so far, just in terms of like the reaction to uh, the idea of the BM shows happening again, is like the enthusiasm and the appetite is just you know absolutely kind of like obvious and insatiable and, and there and I do think that for people who uh, have live music and have music as an important part of their lives what the last six months has made them realize is just how absolutely fundamental to what they are as a human being music is like it is absolutely at the core of everything that they are about and I don't think that's going away and I think that the, the, the value and the importance of live music has just been accelerated and accentuated so much. So I just hope that we're given the opportunity as a sector to be able to, you know, help people kind of like satisfy that, 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 that desire over the, over the coming months and years, which I'm sure we will be. Thank you. Baptiste, if you want to add something, otherwise I'll jump to, to the other question. It's not, now time is getting close. Just for me, there are one word, it's um, slow down. Just I hope we will slow down on everything, on production of stuff, on um, the way we talk in this industry uh, between uh, different uh, actors of this business, etc. Just slowing down, it's, uh, it's, it's 
business maybe sure okay we, we work for that but it's before a business it's it's culture it's uh, thinking about stuff so for that we definitely need more time yeah and and i think it's interesting like what you mentioned now before business this is culture and i, I think this this uh, leads us to the next question is from danielle uh, i will try to short the 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 question so he runs a space in porto in portugal for 20 years now and after the COVID or during the COVID, they changed the way they are programming. And instead of selling tickets, they are selling tables for meals that you can watch a concert or a performance or a other show. Uh, it's, it's a way that they keep, they keep uh, on paying artists and paying cachets and, pay, uh, uh, and supporting the, the art and culture and also the way that they still able to be open and program. So uh, the question is, uh, he asks you all, do you think that this is a kind of model that should be proposed to a lot of other venues? I have no one specific to, to make this question. I think you have time to think. <laughs> I, I try to be short, but f first, I have a lot of people around me telling me, hey, look, in Berlin, we do that. Like we transform our club to exhibition venues with installation. There are a lot of good way. Uh, of course, I think we have to try to continue to work and uh, not only for cachet, not only, uh, of course, some, some uh, country don't have the same security uh, than we have in France. And here we are paid for one year doing nothing. It's, it's a deal, it's already like that. They tell us until next year, September next year, you will have money even if you don't do anything. So, okay, it's certainly not the same situation everywhere. But uh, it's mainly to propose something and continue to spend this cultural field for, social, for, for, for the social aspects of what we are doing. Now, uh, it's, uh, it's different in each country. Law, it's so specific right now. Even understanding what is the law in our own country during COVID-19, it's almost impossible. It changed every week. And even if we try to follow up, it's, yeah, it's really complicated. So uh, I think, yes, if you have an opportunity to still spend in culture in your own venue, it's the best. You can still connect with uh, the people who usually uh, go to your venues, etc., and you can continue to have artistic acts. So yes, sure, do it. But um, by example, at Le Sur, it's impossible to welcome people so as i tell uh, to uh, as an answer to the other question we do residency we do like classes dg classes this kind of thing but yeah it's not the same you know yes i would like to add because uh, i think you should definitely try it uh, but make sure that you um, you check this first with the local authorities if this if this fits the measurements and and and, and because uh, there was an example in amsterdam also a venue that did the same they switched and they had tables and then sit down concerts but eventually they had to close anyway because first of all it's super hard to control the people once they are there and once they are drinking alcohol um, you can you can you can have as much fences and every and, and walking routes as you want, but it's really hard. Um, and also, what Baptiste is saying, they change every week with 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 uh, with, the, with the policies and the legislation. So make sure you have a good connection or a good um, conversation with your local authorities, so you you don't make a mistake and you get a fine or anything. Yeah, Melissa, want to add something, right? Yeah, no, I just wanted to say. Uh, um, that I think that that definitely if they have if, if infrastructure inside of their space if their venue has set up for different things like a table seating food whatever they can go and do it but if you're not if that's not what your club is made for and you don't have the extra things you have to think about so many other ways to you make a construct which is then no no longer viable and and, and uh, for anybody and so then you're just trying to create something um, which, um, you know, uh, I think doesn't have sustainability, you know, and I think that the idea is to keep them open and to like what we're doing in our also small venue 
is just like we, we are open for drinks. We can't do anything else. We have some DJs kind of as background music because we can't even do that because people can't move around. They can't dance. They can't sing. You know, there's so many limitations to what it's possible right now, but we still maintain what we can do and um, try to think about ways, you know, like uh, Baptiste of doing something that's space, which is possible, which is not going to totally uh, deconstruct everything and make it more work than is necessary in the moment than just keeping you know keeping the place open and that's the goal for like we want the venues to stay open we try to think about how we can do that so that everybody you know there is a space there because spaces you know are really important in every city and every um, um, area where you really need to to fight for that and since things get restructured all the time, we don't know what that's like. So let's keep maintain that and do the best. But making it to something new is maybe not a great model. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Also, definitely, if you have the luck to to say no, because it's about that. Many of the people open the venues because they don't have the choice. But if you don't gonna run a bank route in the next couple of months, sometimes it's good to say no. Here, we choose with a lot of actors um, in France to, to, to say no, because at some point, our government just um, announced in the public radio that, hey, it's fine now, culture can come back and the news can reopen. We was not aware, they, we never had any talk with them. They just announced that on the public radio. Okay, cool. But after that, so people are happy. Yeah, it's cool. We can come back to a cinema. We can come back to concert venue. But from that, the real worker, uh, in this universe, we save a protocol. We say, hey, you can open, you should open, but it's like that, like that, like that, like that. And sometimes you have to say no, because if we say yes, once we have new rules, it's also the, the worst way for us to be listened by the, the government and the people who, who, who manage this crisis. So yes, of course, we all want to reopen. We all want to relieve, but Sometimes saying no is the safer way to uh, hope for um, a life back and for just having our venues as we love to have it. So. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one final question um, because it's four o'clock. I, I was late, so we all start late. So we go a little bit <laughs> after four o'clock. Is uh, specific for Ella, but uh, feel free to 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 add something. It's to ask Ella how does she see the, this moment that uh, in the lives of independent cultural centers throughout Europe. It's quite tricky to summarize this this idea in in few words. But uh, how do you see uh, the lives of the independent cultural centers in Europe? Mute. Sorry. I'll... Yeah, no, no. Let me see. I, I also opened because she she asked it in the in in the chat. How do I see okay. this moment in the lives of the independent country? So I guess uh, how I see this Corona moment. Huh? I guess that's the question. Yeah. Um, yeah. The impact. I think. Yeah. Exactly. Um, well, um, it is like we have been discussing before. There are also venues. Um, they are independent, independent cultural venues, but it's still a building and they are depending on, on audiences and ticket sales mostly. Um, so the arguments of the things that we have discussed before are actually the same for the, for the cultural centers as well. It's about finding a way to either stay open if you have to be open to survive or say no. I really like that one, Baptiste. If you, have, if you are able to, to do it, then, uh, then yeah, you should also use this opportunity to maybe also look inward, look into the team, maybe see if you can, uh, I don't know, restructure or rethink your vision or what you want to do. It's, uh, there are tons of possibilities what you can do when you are closed, when you're not open for the public. Um, but, um, and, and, and otherwise to try to find uh, different ways um, of, of making, uh, getting income with the table seating or the online or merchandise uh, so, uh, sales or, yeah, you see so many of the examples uh, online. I don't know them all out of my head, but, um, and then for the rest, yeah, I don't have a clear answer as well. It's, it's, uh, it is, uh, 
it's a, how do you say this? It's a path, it's a journey, I would say. And we have to find on the way uh, what works for everybody. Yeah, I hope this is a kind of an answer <laughs> that she wants. So, uh, I think it's four o'clock. Uh, Elise, uh, please help me to conclude this conversation. Uh, so, uh, tell me if we should proceed with the questions or... or yeah, sure, I think, we can, uh, I think we can wrap up now. Uh, mind, no? Hi, hi Louis, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm here, sorry. Yeah, so yeah, no, I think it's, we can wrap up. It was um, a quite, a, quite a passionate conversation and uh, a very interesting comments from our speakers. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for, for joining our conversation. Uh, this is also actually the wrap up of the first day of the, the Live Europe Online Festival. So thank you a lot to all the attendees who, who joined us. Uh, we still have one more day coming up tomorrow of still very, very interesting conversations. Uh, one uh, at uh, 2 p.m. with um, uh, the future of the European music ecosystem uh, in the morning on how music venues are staying active. That's been created by Music X Corona, the newsletter a lot of us have been following uh, in the past weeks. And uh, to, to finish, uh, we'll have uh, concerts with more than 12 uh, new European artists uh, that are going to be streamed right from the stages of our music venues. So yeah, uh, you're more than welcome to join us. And uh, once again, thank you. Thank you very much. I right. would just like to head with uh, yeah, like sure. a final yes. idea. So yes. guys, thank you very much for, for this time. Um, I would, I would just like to also thank you for the work that you've been developing and I think these ideas that the dance floor is getting more political or music is getting more political, I think is, is, is or like cultural activities is getting more political, there's no second choice, there's no second option and, and I think that's this sense of responsibility, a few years ago we never thought that like the, the people behind the entertainment will have this uh, responsibility of as activists or building a better society. So uh, thank you very much for the work that you've been developing. And, and, and I think these kind of forums and these kind of discussions, that's what builds what we can call that is an European idea or uh, a, a common speech, a, a, common, a common discourse. And like in, uh, I was saying uh, in the beginning, in a moment with such polarized society, there's this kind of conversations that, that make society move forward and, and putting, putting these topics over the table with such passion and, and such people with such interesting work is what makes us feel better at the end of the day. So thank you very much for your time. And let's, let's see how, uh, how are the next steps. There was a question about what do we expect to do in the next months. I think if you do the same that you've been doing in the next in the last years it will it will all go for the best. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>